All right, so welcome back everybody. So for this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to play Great Plains. In this game, foxes and snakes fight for dominance over the Great Plains. And uh, this is also an air. So this is a area control game. So in this game, we're, we're trying to control these lowland areas, which are yellow, these yellow tiles. And we want to try to get as many as, uh, as our meeples, whether you're playing as the fox or as you're, you're playing as the snakes, you're, the object is we're trying to control these yellow areas, as many of them as we can, to get the most points. And whoever has the most of their meeple on a spot is going to win that area, and they're going to get all of the points for it, even if they only have, like, let's say the equation was, for instance, uh, two foxes and one snake on this space here. Even though they only had two of their foxes here, they score points for each of the hexes that make up the space, so they would get three points, for instance. If you have an area with water, for instance, these areas that have water, you get an extra point for having them as well. So this area here is like two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points. So this is a very desirable control area and we'll definitely be fighting over this one for sure because of all the extra points in just this one area alone. But it's the person who's going to have the most meeples here that'll win it. And with six of them here, if you get a tie, then nobody gets any points at all. So that's how that's gonna work. Um, so, one of the things you'll do is, the first thing you'll do is starting with one player, one player is going to pick a spot, um, a cave on the mountain tiles. So there's a cave here, there's a cave here, there's a cave here, one up there. There's one on every single tile, but we're gonna put one of our tents on that cave. And we're gonna have three of these tents in total. So we'll have three areas. We'll be able to place out our meeples to start with. Um, you don't, you'll still only place out one meeple at a time, of course. And you can only place out where the cave entrance is. So even though technically, if I was to take this spot here, even though technically this cave is, is adjacent to this, you'll notice the cave opening is here only. So I can still only put out a meeple from here to here. Now, when you place out meeples, the rule is you can only place out meeples from a starting tent, because you'll have three of them, or where you have another meeple. So if there was a meeple here, I could put out another meeple next to this meeple, for instance. Now, there is a way to break that rule. There are these special tokens here that will allow you to place out meeples not next to a meeple necessarily. So this horse token, when you land on a space, that has a horse token on it, on your next turn, you can use an animal token instead of a simple placement. And the horse token allows you to basically place one of your meeples two hexes away from another one of your meeples. So if I had one of these, this would be a legal placement from here to here using the horse. So that's how the horse is going to work. Now, if you have the eagle, so if you have this one, the eagle will allow you to basically place one of your meeples over a mountain hex onto another space on the other side. So for instance, I could use this token here to go from here to there, because that's exactly one hex away, and that's obviously a mountain hex. You can't place on mountain hexes, but the eagle, do eagle does allow you to go over a hex. So that's what that is going to do, for instance. And then the bear. The bear is a meaner token. If you use this, you can use this to push a meeple away. So for instance, if I was the snakes and I was gonna use my bear token, I could use my snake here to push this fox in that direction, for instance. And then later down the road, I could do that again if I had another one of these tokens and I could push, I don't know, like this snake over here and pushing this here. If I had a snake, like for instance, right here, for instance, I could then use this to push the fox over to here. So that would how is how it would work. Now, if you ever push an opponent's maple onto a tile that has one of these tokens on it, or one of those tokens, they still don't get it. However, if I was to use a horse or an eagle token to land on a space that has a token, I would still get that token. So that's how that would work. 
Um, and then if you ever somehow manage to push a, a meeple into a mountain, normally it's hard to do that, but for instance, let's see here, what's a good spot? Let's say this was here, this was here. It wouldn't be very logical because I wouldn't be able to, I can't control green areas for points. But as a for instance, if I had the snake meeples here and I had the bear token, I could go from here and I could push this fox into the mountain, killing it, basically. It would be removed from the game. You, they, the other player wouldn't be able to place this one that was removed from the game. So it is possible to move, move these guys into areas where you can't obviously utilize them. And there's, so there is ways of, you know, controlling an area if you have a bear token around, you could potentially use that to help you con to control a area of your, that you're trying to control. So that's how, basically how the bear tokens would work. So let's go ahead and um, set up for the game. So we're gonna play this game. So now the, these tiles are double-sided, so you'll have different layouts every time you play the game. And since I'm the one that's going, placing the tents first, I'm gonna place my tent right here where this cave is because I wanna to try to access and control this. So then my opponent can play, they can place their tent out next and they're gonna place here so that way they can try to vie for this location here, this lowland location as well. And then, then I'm gonna place mine, um, I'm gonna place mine up here. And then the foxes, they'll place theirs. Or Manta, he'll place his fox tent um, over here. And then I'll place my last one. Um, hmm. I'll place it over here, I think. Or, no, I'll place it here. And then since Manta's the last one placing a fox, his fox tent, he's gonna place it over here. And then since he was the last player to place his tent, he's actually the first player to place his meeple. Now the game will be over when all meeples have been placed, okay? That's how that would work. So for instance, he has three spots he can start out. He can place one of his foxes either over here, he can place it here, or he can place it here. He's gonna place it here, which will allow him to get this eagle token. Now, there's only three of each tokens, so if they ever run out, then you obviously can't get any more of them, even if you land on a space that gives them out. So, very strategic in acquiring these, these tokens. It's very strategic to do so. So he's gonna get that. Manta's gonna get that. So I'll just place it next to his, his stash there. And then, now it's my turn. So... I think I want to go over here and get started on this area. So I'm going to take that bear token. That might come in handy for this dominance area. And then um, he, for his turn, he is going to use his eagle token right away. Now, if you, when you use a token, you're using the token instead of your normal placement. So you're not getting to place two animals on the same turn. And you're also not allowed to place you're not also not allowed to do two of these tokens on the same turn either. So if you're starting to hoard these, you could end the game not using some of these. So you want to try to use them when you can. So he's going to use his eagle token now to go from, from this location here to cross this mountain with the eagle token to place his fox there. So that's what he's done. Okay, and then it's my turn. So I'm just going to place my guy right here to try to control this area. Now he's seeing what, I, what I'm doing here, so now Manta, he's gonna place his fox token here, which will also allow him to acquire the bear token. Okay, and then I'm gonna go over here, like this, and then Manta, he is gonna go over here, like this, okay, and then, now it's my turn. I really want this area, so I'm gonna go for it. And Manta, he could go there. 
and definitely, um, uh, but then if he goes there, then I still end up controlling it because I've got three spots already and he's only got two on this spot. So we have to do this wisely. Um, he's going to go here and get the uh, eagle token. And um, now, if now if I was to go here, he could use his bear token to basically push me into this mountain, and I would I would lose my spot here. Um, but I do have control of the area as well, so I'm not too worried about losing this because um, there's not really any way he can push me out. So. I'm not too worried, so I'm going to get started up here and take the uh, horse token. Um, and so he is going to also start over here. He realized he couldn't get this spot here, so now he's got other endeavors he's trying for. Um, and then I'm going to use my horse token over here so I can skip this spot and go right here up there and then it's Mantis turn um, let's see here what does Manta want to do what is he gonna do um, well he's probably just gonna try for this area so he's gonna put another one of his uh, meeples there okay let's see here um I'm gonna go here and get the horse token. Now when you're when you're using the bear token, you can't push a meeple into another meeple. So that so that's why I didn't that's why he didn't use his bear token to try to push me into here over and then in this guy into here. Because if there's another meeple backing up the other meeple in that direction, then then you, the bear token won't work. So just thought I'd no, make note of that. Um, so let's see here. Um, I took the horse token. So now it's Mantis turn. Um, so that's worth two, two points there, whoever gets that. Obviously he's not gonna be able to get that because even though he's got this, it's only good for going over mountains. So instead, he's gonna use his his eagle token and he's gonna go from this maple here and get started on this spot over here and get started there. Okay, so now I could use my horse token to get a spot there instantly. And I could do that, but he could just simply use his bear token to push me out so I think I will not go for that and instead use my horse token my horse token to go here so I can control this area since he doesn't have anything nearby I don't need to worry about push, placing any more meeples here because there's not really any way he can get here unless he goes here and then uses that that's going to take a few turns though so I'm not really worried about him trying to take that from me um, okay, so now it's Mantis' turn again. Um, Mantis just gonna go here, so that way he gets full control of that spot. Um, now it's my turn. I guess I'll go here, so I can control that area. And then, Mantis going to get... the uh, hmm, horse token here. Okay, so he got himself his horse token. And then I am, let's see. Hmm, where do I wanna go now? I guess we'll take this spot. And then Manta's gonna go Let's see here. Manta, where are you going to go? Um, 
he's gonna go here and get the eagle token. Now he's got one of each. All right, my turn. Um, let's see here. Uh, well, he's got two already there, so. Um, let's see here. Where do I want to go? What, what can I take from him at this point? That's the question. I can't really access any of these areas right now. I need an eagle token just to simply get over here. So that's what I need to do. I need to place this in a spot where I can get an eagle token. So I'm gonna place this, I'm gonna place this here and get an eagle token. Actually, I'm gonna place it here instead and get a horse token. Then it's Manta's turn. And Manta is going to use his horse token. Or he's going to use his horse token and go right here. Okay? Um, which now blocks me because my plan was to use the eagle token once I got, a, got an eagle token to cross this mountain hex to go right here. But now that he's there, I can't go there. I can't really reach it. I can't reach this one. Let's just say that. I can't reach that one for sure. So he's, in a sense, taken that spot from me. So now I can't access any of these. He can, though. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, because I can't cross it with a, with, a, with a horse there either. So now it's my turn. Um, I guess I'll go and get my eagle token there. Anyways, and then Manta is going to go here and get his bear token. And then it's my turn. So, um, now that I have an eagle token, okay, so I'm going to use my eagle token and go from here to here. That's what we'll do. Now it's Manta's turn. Manta's just basically going to be filling in these spots, but, um, he's going to go here to try to stop me from doing that. Um, so now it's my turn, so I think what I'll do is I'm going to go here and get another horse token. Manta's going to go here to prevent me from using the bear token, which will get him another eagle token. Um, now he controls that area. Um, and I can't, I can't push him out. So now it's, um, now it's my turn. So I guess there isn't much I can do at this point, except trying to control some of these other areas. So we'll go, um, I'm gonna use my horse token and then go right here. Now he could use his bear token and push me here. And that's what he's going to do. He's gonna use his bear token um, and then push my snake here. Um, which now means I can't take it from him. So he's got control of that area. Um, there's not many places for me to go. I guess mostly the only thing I can really do now is just uh, buy control for these areas here. While Manta works on, you know, getting these areas finished. So then I guess um, I'll go here and... Uh, Manta's gonna go here and get himself a horse token. And then 
I will go there, and Manta will go here, and then I'll go up here, and Manta will go here, and I will go here. Okay, and that's the game. Now that all of the places have been, all of the pieces, all of the meeples, all of the foxes, all of the snakes have been placed, the game is over, and now we tally up the score to see who won. So, let's see here. We're going to do this by section, but we're also going to do this by player one at a time. So, Manta is going to score for this area. He's going to score for this area, this area, this area, this area. So, we'll take that snake off because he's going to score for all of that. Um, he's also going to score for this area, so we'll take that snake off. And I take I took this area, so we're gonna take his foxes or or at least that fox off. So I know that I've controlled that spot. And looks like that's about it. Um he's got those and I got that, so okay. So then he's gonna count up a score. He's got three points for this area. That makes five for this area altogether. Um now it's seven. Now it's 10, now it's 13, um, then 14, 15, 16, 17. So you got 17 points altogether. You got 17 points. I, on the other hand, I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 points altogether for this section. Um, that would make 13. That would make 16, 17, 18. So I got 18 points. I beat him by just one point. Good job, Manta. Good game. You beat. I only beat you by one point. You kept me on my toes. Well, that's how you play Great Plains. So if you guys liked this video, don't forget to leave me a like, and I'll see you guys again next time. Bye.